This is Paranoid Android, a custom ROM for the North American HTC One XL. Now normally I don't show boot animations, but this guy's just way too cute. Anyways, so this is Paranoid Android, a custom ROM for the North American HTC One XL. This is version 2.14, and Paranoid Android is, is an AOSP-based ROM with a bunch of stuff pulled from both CyanogenMod and the Android Open Kang project. You can see the buttery smoothness as we switch between uh, pages here. Um, Paranoid Android comes with Goo Manager and ROM Manager for managing your ROM, Super SU for root, and terminal emulator just as an added bonus. You may have noticed Apex Launcher there is there as well. I added that myself, as well as Flash the Google Apps, so we have things like the Play Store and Gmail present as well. So Paranoid Android, despite being an AOSP-based ROM, has one notable feature that differentiates it from all other ROMs, and that is the idea of a per-application um, screen size. So we'll see as we bring up the settings application, immediately we see a difference from what you're used to seeing on the North American HTC One X, where we have a left column here with the different pages of the, um, of the setup, and then the right side. This is the tablet mode of displaying the, uh, the setting screen, and that's configurable in the paranoid settings. So if we look at the workspace settings, you can change what you would like your device to look like. If, if you want it to look like a phablet or a small tablet UI. Uh, by default, it's set up for 320 by 360. Um, user interface, you can configure how different um, parts of the user interface look. Uh, so by default, it's in phone mode. Um, you can also set the settings on a per application basis. So just as a, an example, let's change the, uh, the settings app itself that we've seen in this new layout. By default, I think just to show off the, what the ROM can do, it's set to 720 pixels per inch. So if we click reset up here, all the custom settings that uh, Paranoid Android sets will be, will be cleared and may take two times to start it, but let's launch the settings app. Okay, so this happened last time. I actually had to go through and make this change twice. So settings, reset, okay. Now if we go into settings, there we go. This is more like what we're used to seeing on the One X, where we have just a whole bunch of rows, and when you select an option, it goes to a completely new screen. So an, another application that shows up a lot differently is YouTube. Um, so let's go and install that from the Play Store, just as a cool example. So here we are in YouTube, and you can see that it's the tablet style screen, where you kind of have this like inside of a cylinder. And so if we exit the YouTube app, that's another example, bring up the paranoid settings again. Go apps. Let's find YouTube and hit reset. So it seems to automatically detect some apps that it knows that it likes to show off with the different screen sizes. And you can see YouTube's back now to the the standard screen layout that we're used to. Anyways, let's just go over a couple other features of this ROM. Um, so, like I said, there's a lot of op, uh, features pulled in from CyanogenMod and AOKP. The launcher is the Trebuchet launcher, uh, which is from CyanogenMod with a few configuration options. I tend to use Apex Launcher myself, but um, each to his own. Uh, theme support, so probably either AOKP or CyanogenMod themes, I'm not sure which or both, will be supported by this ROM. 
Um, if you go under system, this is where there's a lot of um, ROM specific stuff that you can configure. So the status bar, for example, um, you can see the clocks up here, but we can get rid of it. Not sure why you'd want to, but you can move it to the center if you like. Um, and, and things like that you can all, all configure. Um, the power menu, so this is when you press and hold the power key. There's a bunch of extra options in here that we're not used to seeing on a stock device, uh, such as selecting your profile, which I'll talk about in a bit, taking a screenshot, uh, turning on airplane mode and setting um, sound, vibrate, or silent mode. The navigation bar, so we're not used to this on the One X, but check this out. You can bring up the, the buttons that you're used to seeing on the Galaxy Nexus and do things like bring up Google Now. Something that you can't do with uh, the capacitive keys. And of course, you can configure the crap out of the notification bar. But let's turn it off because we don't really need it. I, I kind of like it at night though because you can set them to be very dim colored. Uh, hardware keys. So this is where you can remap the keys to do different options. Um, so by default the recent apps key does the recent apps and pressing and holding brings up the recent apps. So if you want any custom actions I like to map the home key to search assistant which is Google Now. And look at that my Blue Jays won tonight. <laughs> Finally against the New York Yankees of all teams. Um, pressing and holding the recent apps, I like to set that to opening and closing the menu, which there isn't any on the screen to show. There we go, there's the menu. I really like having the recent task key bringing up the task switcher, which is so fast on Jelly Bean. That was taking seconds on Viper XL. Um, Let's take a look at some other features here under system. I guess it's everything under there. The navigation bar, uh, which we've already gone through. Um, profiles is another is one of my favorite features of CyanogenMod. Basically, you can go in and configure a bunch of different ways that you'd like the device to behave. So, for example, you can um, control whether Wi-Fi is on or off, GPS, Bluetooth. Set the volume levels. Um, set the volume levels per application and also you can you can disable the lock screen and this is something that I've been waiting to try out you can actually write your profiles to an NFC tag so that you can just walk up and tap your device and it will switch to that profile which is very cool I like to disable the lock screen um, in home mode and silent mode and when I'm at work or anything I want to have the lock screen enabled so if someone does steal my phone they're at least temporarily locked out of my device but a very cool feature so let's take a quick look at the camera this is your typical stock camera so let's take a picture of something cool yeah you missed that didn't you but yeah, you can swipe to the left and go through the gallery. Let's delete this guy. So the camera, it's no sense camera, but it does a fairly decent job of, of taking photos. So this is how I have Paranoid Android set up on my device that I use as my daily driver. So this here is um, a widget called Super Clock from the Beautiful Widgets collection. And this is an ICS theme. I really like it. It's kind of slick. So if you go under Beautiful Widgets, Super Clock Settings, Appearance, Skins, this one's called ICS style, as opposed to the standard skin. I kind of like that, you know, very plain, very basic look. 
This here is CPU master free, which shows your CPU temperature, your battery strength, uh, your battery remaining, and the temperature of your device. This widget here is built right into the ROM with the brightness control and everything. Um, Xenoamp is kind of a cool media player. Um, it's available on the XDA developer forums. Um, of course, XDA, uh, where I spend almost all of my free cycles. And Beyond Pod, which I picked up during the end of summer sale on the Play Store. It is a fantastic podcast application. Of course, uh, a couple Android podcasts that I like to listen to. And I'm brushing up on my French from high school. Um, the launcher I'm using is Apex Launcher, and the theme that I'm using is called Xperia. And I really like this because I like the black colors on the on the theme. There it is, Xperia. There's also, you can use a, a jelly bean theme, which is kind of cool on ICS ROMs, but not really necessary when you're actually running jelly bean on your device. Um, I have the settings in the normal style. I found that although it's kind of cool to set it to the tablet layout, in the end it's usually more practical just to use <laughs> the phone layout. Um, I've set up three profiles for myself, home, work, and night. And the only real difference is at night the volumes are a little bit lower and at work, oh yeah, and yes, yeah, sorry, and at work uh, I enable the security settings. So the other thing is, uh, it's kind of cool, is you can set the volumes differently for uh, the phone and for notifications. So for example, at night, I set the notifications to completely off. But I do want my ringtone on, because I receive probably about one phone call every three days. So if my phone does happen to ring in the middle of the night, it's probably important. And this is in contrast to stock ROMs, um, like the HTC ROM itself where the ringtone and, and the notification volume are not individually configurable. Um, when you press the volume key, uh, it brings up the volume, obviously, but you can also expand it. And so that you can control the alarm, the notifications, and and the media volume and the ringtone. So you can actually configure it to actually start in this configuration. Anyways, so I guess that's the end of my tour. Again, this is Paranoid Android version 2.14 for the North American HTC One XL. Thanks again, Rohan32 on XDA Developer Forums. The link to this ROM is available in the description of this video. So enjoy.